Hi everyone, welcome back to Yulan's channel. And today, instead of talking, keep going on with safety psychology course series. Today we'll be talking, focus more on the brain related issues. And in this particular video, we'll be talking about neural tube defects. And this is really this is this is a really interesting um, neurodevelopmental issue because, um, it, like first its appearance is kind of really interesting, and you may be wondering, uh, what what could be happened, and also etc. So yeah, just keep watching if you're interested. So let's talk about the brain a little bit before we begin. So the brain is the key working mechanism of the body that supports every part, every part working together and keeping you alive. Even if someone can still breathe, breathe after the brain is dead, all organs in the body systems will gradually cease and eventually the heart will stop beating, which demonstrates the huge role that the brain plays in the regulation of the body. This lecture will introduce and discuss the formation of neural tube defects, the two most common defects that could form during embryogenesis, the possible causes for NTDs, and future research directions. So how does this thing develop? As the brain originally develops from the embryo, there is a group of cells that interact and contributes to the formation of all organs and tissues of the body, and this group of cells is known as germ layers. The three germ layers are ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm, and each of them further develops into different parts of the body. Among the three germ layers, the ectoderm is the one that gives rise to the neural tube and the neural crest, which forms the brain, spinal, and peripheral nerves. After 15 to 20 days, ectoderm will turn to the neural ectoderm, where the central part will become the central nervous system that is made up of the brain and spinal cord, and the peripheral part will become the peripheral nervous system and receive information from body parts and send instructions from the brain to the limbs. The development and closure of the neural tube is completed 20 days, 20 days, 28 days after the conception. During this process of neural tube formation, neural tube defects (NTD) could happen when the neural tube closure fails. Failure due to neural tube closure can occur in different locations and stages during the developmental axis formation, resulting in distinct malformations. When the tube doesn't close at the posterior neural pore, spina bifida could arise. This happens when the lumbar cord joins the sacral cord and the spinal cord protrudes through an incompletely fused spine, thus externi sorry, externalized like a tail. The protruding part interferes with spinal cord functions and may lead to paralysis since it hinders the flow of cerebral spinal fluid. Furthermore, this extra length and weight of the tail pulls on the brain. In more severe cases, it may even pull the cerebellum out. Depending, um, Depending on the size and location of the lesion, interruption of the spinal cord could cause levels of paralysis of the legs, incontinence of urine and feces, anesthesia of the skin, abnormalities of hips, knees, and feet. Likewise, the intellectual disability caused by spinal bifida ranges from mild to severe depending on the size and location of the opening of the tail and whether the nerves are affected. Surprisingly, the mortality rate of infants with spina bifida from a study of 1,533 live more infants was 4.4%. The study also shows that maternal obesity and overweight are associated with a high risk of mortality of infants, which is 15.7% compared with normal weight mothers, which proves the importance of maternal weight prior to spina bifida. And all those sources I used in this for this video will be um. I'll be, I'll be showing this on the slide at the end of this video, so yeah. On the other hand, anencephaly, which forms when the spine doesn't close an anterior neural pore, will be much more serious than spina bifida. Anencephaly is characterized by the absence of the brain hemisphere and the cranial arch, the upper parts of the neural tube that forms the forebrain and cerebellum. cerebrum. There isn't enough skin and bone to cover and thus the brain disintegrates. Integrates. The diagnosis of anencephaly is confirmed by a physical examination of their looks. For example, the common features of anencephaly babies are frog-like appearance, short neck, bulging eyes, and large eyes. Unlike spinal bifida that has a relatively low risk of mortality, anencephaly occurs in 1.0 to 4.7 per 1,000 births. And the mortality rate is 100% in utero, at birth or a few hours after birth. 
Due to the lack of cere cerebrum of the brain, infants with anencephaly are incapable of having consciousness and having a feeling of pain. Although may still have re reflex actions such as respiration and occasionally to sound and touch. It's important to remember that anencephaly is lethal and there's no chance to survive up under this condition due to the severe brain malformation and that is present. Neurotube defects such as anencephaly and spinal bifida result from environmental, nutritional, and parental genetic factors. The most common environmental influences are when the mother takes in harmful substances or experiences obesity or other diseases such as diabetes during pregnancy. Research was conducted by comparing 2,755 Atlanta-area women who gave birth to an infant without birth defect with another group of Atlanta-area women who gave birth to an infant with anencephaly or spinal bifida. After adjusting all other compounding variables that could have an impact on the result, research results, the researchers found that obese women had almost twice the risk of having an infant with NTDs. Exposure to some airborne chemicals such as polyvinyl chloride and toxic waste can also be dangerous for the mother and the newborn baby. Furthermore, nutritional risk factors such as the folate status also play a role in the presence of NTDs. The deficiency of folic acid associated with an increased risk of NTD. Deficiency of maternal vitamin B12 is also a known risk of NTD, as vitamin B12 is a cofactor of the enzyme methionine synthesis, an important component of one carbon metabolism in charge of converting hemocysteine into methionine. Different meta-analysis studies all over the world with different races and populations involving Canadians, United States, Chinese, and Tunisians have all demonstrated that low vitamin B12 status is a risk for NTD. For the genetic risk factors for NTDs, human epide epidemiological studies have shown a strong correlation between monozygo monozygotic twins, which is 7.7%, compared to like sex, like sex or dizygotic twins, 4.7%. 4.0 percent. Um, a well documented over 240 40 genes whose mutation caused NTDs in this mouse support the likelihood that numerous gene, fact, gene defects contribute to NTDs. However, it's important to note that there is currently no indication of clinically actionable NTD candidate genes that would directly lead to NTDs. In the past decades, our clinical understanding and treatment for NTD have improved significantly. We have seen a remarkable accumulation of clinical and experimental data in search of the causes and preventive measures of anti neurotube malformations such as an increase in folic acid. Yet, we are still develop a limited knowledge of the morpho morphologic and molecular basis of normal development of human neurotubes. In future research studies, the area of study may be focused on the possible interaction or combinations of gene-nutrient environment interactions, perinatal medical and surgical modifications of NTD and, and effective pr preventive strategies. Studies of survivors from spinal bifida could also be worth attention since there's almost no literature published about later adult ages. So here are the, all the references I used for this video or this lecture. Yeah, um, yeah. So if you're interested in my video, please subscribe and like this video. And yeah, just keep an eye um, for the future videos that will be coming soon. Thank you.